Since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcasts are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that has a numerator which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Hello and welcome. My name is Gaia Babatunde Lamin, and of course, this is Learning Garage. We shall be, of course, I'm your host today. We shall be teaching mathematics, okay? Mathematics is our subject today, and of course, our topic on the mathematics would be numbers and fractions, okay? Or before we go into the topic proper, I think we need to take one or two advices. And because uh, according to the syllabus, okay? And in fact, according to um, the, all the college requirements in Sierra Leone, okay, it is mandatory that everybody should pass mathematics. At least you should get a credit in mathematics. The culture of people running away from mathematics, I, I think we must bring it to an end. I think we must try and help the government of Sierra Leone so that we can improve in our mathematics, okay? And of course, mathematics is one of the simplest subjects in the history of this world okay it only depends upon your effort it only depends upon how much you practice and of course how much you are willing to take in okay um there are series of big topics uh we cannot just go into those topics just like that we need foundation and this class is especially for the senior secondary schools okay that is to say whether you are in SSS1, SSS2, or SSS3. And we find it very interesting that sometimes people who say they are in SSS3 or SSS2 cannot even simplify or cannot even solve simple or basic mathematical problems. Okay, So therefore, today our topic would be numbers and fractions. Okay, Numbers and fractions. I think we have to, we have to start from there. Um, what are numbers? Okay. In everyday life, we see numbers. In everyday life, we play with numbers. In everyday life, we talk numbers. Okay, so for the benefit of all of us, um, we know that numbers, for example, we can demonstrate. Okay, let's take our pen tool. Okay, one of course is a number. Two of course is a number. And as counting goes, we go on, we go on, we go on, we go on. Okay until infinity okay you can never stop counting you, you start counting and of course and you will never stop counting okay um so therefore when we talk about numbers we refer to what we say numbers these are arithmetic values expressed by words symbols or figures representing a particular quantity Please underline the word, okay? Representing a particular quantity, okay? And are used in counting and making calculations, okay? If you are asked what are numbers, we say numbers, these are arithmetic values, okay? What are these values? Values could be represented in English numerals like we say 4, 5, 6, okay? So as we are saying, how does, how does, um, numbers appear eh? somebody will say ah what what is this guy trying to say okay we have forms in which numbers appear okay 
they are they, they are categorized differently just like you have biology when you have classification of living things okay they classify them from plants to animals as well as in plants again there are different different subsection of um plants okay so therefore in mathematics also we have different values okay i will start with the first one we say natural numbers what are natural numbers somebody might be tempted as, uh, are these numbers are, are you going trying to say that all numbers are or there are numbers that are artificial no or are we playing with voodoo or something that is to say, ah, come on i think we need the holy ghost here okay numbers we say these are used when we are counting okay just like i demonstrated and counting or ordering that is to say you want to buy something i want to take something or there is a huge bulk of something that you need to collect or over okay you can use numbers these natural numbers they are sometimes called old numbers or cardinal numbers okay um what do we mean example one is a natural number okay 50 is a natural number 39 okay is a natural number what are we trying to say now okay if all these are natural numbers right what are the what are those that are not natural numbers okay of course shortly we shall explain all of those numbers okay the next set of ones uh, we are going to look at is what cardinal numbers you say these are numbers or cardinal number is a number donating quantity that is to say one two three just like the we did okay one comma two three okay these are cardinal numbers okay and also there's other sets which are ordinal numbers you see most of these things we did in our primary schools and secondary schools but we tend to forget most of these things that's why we are reviewing before we enter proper into um, our fractions okay we say 5 comma 2 comma 4 example okay 5 comma 2 comma 4 um when we say ordinal numbers we are talking about the position of the number in a series such as first number second or third number like for example our five here our five here is our first number that is to say it highlights the position okay we are talking about the position of a number okay in series okay and of course our two there is what is our second number okay and of course our four there is representing or is pointing at the third okay set of number or the third number in this particular series we say whole numbers what are whole numbers hmm? the, the the numbers that include natural numbers and zeros okay natural number and zero not fraction or decimal when a number is whole you're talking about it is not divided there is no subsection of any number attached to it okay it is full it is complete that is to say we have example we have zero of course remember it is inclusive zero okay two three four eight twelve okay these are all all numbers okay but if i have 0 0.025 definitely this is not a whole number and of course if i have a fraction which is one upon two okay which is equivalent also to 0 0.5 this is not also a, this is not a whole number so therefore we say all numbers these are numbers that stand on their own okay these are numbers that are natural numbers including zero okay without having fractions or decimals they do not exist in fraction and neither in decimal form integers we say integers these are numbers or these are numbers that we use for counting okay including zero or negative of a counting number not fraction okay not fraction please note not fraction okay or decimals example We have zero we have minus two we have minus three we have minus one example we have 10 we have 30 okay it doesn't matter whether the number is negative or positive as the case may be as long as it is a whole number okay 
it might be negative like minus 2 here it is negative okay but yet still it is an integer uh, decimal number we say decimal numbers we say any number that contains a decimal point okay any number that contains a decimal point meaning if I have one point one five six okay this is a decimal number 0 0.004 okay we have 9.81 okay these are all decimal numbers okay as long as there is a point existing between the numbers then it is a decimal number okay rational numbers we say a number is rational by op when we obtain or are those obtained by dividing we say rational numbers are those obtained by dividing an integer by another integer okay of course we spoke about integers it might be positive or negative it does not matter in this case okay whether it is negative or positive okay it exists as an integer or can be expressed as a fraction okay we say rational numbers are those obtained by dividing okay let's say example we have two upon five okay of course two is an integer and of course five also is an integer okay so that is one if i have minus three upon seven okay never mind we have minus three here which but also we said minus three is what is also an integer okay but it is a negative integer that is the difference okay we have positive integers and negative integers we say positive integers that bears of course the positive sign even though it is not written there but it exists there is a plus there is a plus in front of the 2 upon 5 okay and also when we say minus 3 upon 7 we are talking about minus 3 there is negative minus 3 upon 7 okay so therefore again we say rational numbers are those obtained by dividing an integer by another integer or can be expressed as fractions now we we'll move on to irrational numbers what are irrational numbers we say these are numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction that is to say we have pi okay comma we have the root of two okay therefore we cannot express example like these numbers as fractions as we move along we shall be including other examples so we can understand better okay we are just explaining the types or the forms or the appearance in which numbers do exist and we move on to positive numbers we say when a, po a number is positive of course um it is greater than zero okay of course from back in the days when we have a number line okay of course uh, these are origin zero and of course on the right hand side we have plus one plus two plus three plus four and so on okay on our left hand side we have the negative numbers like minus one minus two okay minus three and so on okay so we say a number is positive when it is greater than zero okay a number is positive when it is greater than zero okay and of course a number is negative when the value of that number is less than zero okay just like we said there okay suppose we have here minus one two minus three and the likes as long as that number is less than as long as the number is less than zero therefore we term it as a negative number okay we talk about non-negative numbers okay what are these numbers non-negative numbers we say these are numbers that are greater than or equal to zero okay that are greater than or equal to zero that is to say they do not have any negative sign in front of them example we have one we have four we have 17 etc okay as long as all these numbers do not have any negative sign in front of them therefore they are non-negative numbers okay when we say negative numbers we are talking about the likes of minus 1 minus 15 okay minus 30 
as the case may be okay as long as there is a negative value okay there is a negative sign in front of them therefore that number is non-negative negative numbers we say these are numbers that bear the negative sign in front of them and also zero also inclusive is a negative number example we have zero okay we have minus four we have minus seven okay we have again example minus 14 and so on all these numbers are non-positive why because they bear the negative value in front of them okay only if it we are only if it we are positive like say two four eight example because they all bear the positive sign okay they all have positive sign in front of them so therefore these numbers are non positive and also we talk about most times we hear the word we hear the number even numbers even e v e n even numbers okay a number is said to be an even number when what it is divisible by two an integer that is divisible by two is an even number okay example you have four four could be divided or is divisible by two okay we have 16 it is an even number 28 okay is an even number 30 okay these are all divisible by 2 okay what are the numbers that are not divisible by 2 example we have 7 okay even though 2 can enter there but there would be also a remainder of course from common sense we know that 2 can enter into 7 but there is a remainder which we are not interested in and of course 9 okay is not even and of course 11 etc okay so therefore all even numbers are numbers that are divisible by 2 okay as the case may be we talk about odd numbers what are odd numbers you see odd number is an integer that is not divisible by 2 okay like i pointed out there okay 3 is an odd number 7 is an odd number 9 is an odd number 77 is an odd number okay 101 101 etc okay so all these are odd numbers as long as they cannot be di divided by two exactly then we turn those numbers as odd numbers okay so so far i think um i hope we all understand different forms in which numbers appear so stay tuned of course this is learning garage and of course i'm your host today guy Babatunde Lamin, and of course we are talking about numbers and fractions we shall take a quick break and when we come back we shall continue since the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that as a numerator, which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Mm -hmm. 
Hello and welcome again and of course this is learning garage okay this is where we fix your problems and today we are fixing a very simple problem in our mathematics mathematics in daily life we are talking about numbers and fractions okay we have spoken about we spoke about rather we spoke about the types of numbers the way they exist how can we express numbers okay in different forms Okay, now this is just a revision. Now we are talking about fraction. Now we move on to fractions. Okay. Um, of course, fractions are commonly used. They are commonly used in everyday language to express part of a whole number. Okay. Remember, a fraction is just a tip, or is just some amount of a specific or a particular whole number. Like we say, when I'm holding this pen, it is. A single pen it means that I'm holding a single pen a number you can say one pen okay if I take a fraction of this pen okay I remove the cover there okay I have taken some part of the pen okay like that is to say practically it might not be complete okay it, it will be only complete when I put again the cover on top of the pen okay then I say I have a whole pen okay of course that is not expressed in our daily life okay never mind of course we say fractions are commonly used in everyday language to express part of a whole number we have apple there and of course if we divide that apple let's say into four different halves okay we have one side and another side there okay we divide again between student 1 student 2 student 3 and student 4 okay so if student 1 for example student 1 represents one fourth okay of the particular apple that is to say he only ate or took one part of the apple okay so we represent that in fraction as one upon four okay that is to say a fraction of that and if we take our calculator okay and we say 1 divided by 4 this will be our result that is 0 0.25 okay 0 0.25 will be will give us our result that that is to say it is not a whole number okay remember we say a fraction is just part of a whole number okay so we have reduced a single apple into four different halves so if i say I alone I'm going to take three fourths of that particular apple. It is like saying I have eaten okay. I have eaten three parts, okay. I have eaten three parts of the apple, okay. It only remains one fourth of the apple, okay. That is to say if I do my calculations, for example, I translate that into decimals okay i say three divided by four this will give us 0 0.75 okay which is much larger than our previous part which was 0 0.25 that is to say i take a larger share okay amongst the three of us okay so therefore we can use that information to represent or we can use that information to translate it into fraction okay remember the numerator there is one and of course the denominator there is four okay so one is just part of the four okay meaning in total it is four parts and also one is just a fraction of the four halves we say we can define fraction how can we define fractions we say fraction a fraction consists of a numerator okay as we said a numerator example okay we have two which represent our numerator here and of course on top which is on top and also a denominator separated by a horizontal line okay this is a horizontal line and of course we say three upon example seven our two there represent what a numerator okay while our seven there represent what our denominator so we said fractions are represented in this form okay a numerator on top followed by a denominator underneath 
wherein it is separated by a horizontal line okay and of course our horizontal line there is called the vinculum the vinculum is called the horizontal line there okay that is to say this man that is standing here okay it is our vinculum which is a division sign okay and of course we say a vinculum can represent the operation the operation division okay that is to say two divided we say two here is divided by seven so again we say again division by zero is not possible okay suppose i have four mangoes of course and i give you i say go and share amongst nobody okay go and share these mangoes amongst nobody meaning you have four mangoes you cannot share with anybody it means that it is not possible in mathematics okay that is to say if i have four i divide that four okay if i divide that four by zero we say this is not possible okay it is not possible because we cannot divide any natural number any integer by zero it is never possible if we take our calculator for example we demonstrate that on the calculator okay we say 4 divided by 0 guess what you say cannot divide okay it answers the question cannot divide by 0 it is undefined okay it is mathematically incorrect to say ah you are going to divide something by 0 okay any natural number an integer whether it be positive or negative okay you cannot divide that number by 0 also we say a fraction can a fraction is defined as a upon b okay that is we are saying again another definition a upon b where a and b are integers this could be any number okay a can or b can represent any number okay that is both a and b are what variables okay they can change or they can represent any number at any given time okay also don't forget it state that where b is not equal to zero b must never be equal to zero okay b must never be equal to zero if for example i say where my a is five sorry where a is 5 and our b is 0 if i come to divide a upon b this gives me what 5 upon 0 which is undefined okay it is undefined now we move on to the next step we say we look at the types of reactions okay types of reactions of course our first case study there is common fractions okay when we say a fraction is common, what do we mean? Common fractions, okay? We say a common fraction is one in which the numerator is less than the denominator, okay? When a numerator is less than a denominator, example, so that is to say 3 upon 7, okay? Our numerator there is what? 3, okay? Our denominator there is what? 7. We are 3 is less than seven okay if we represent that um, using inequality sign we say three is less than seven and our seven there is greater than three okay so therefore whenever we have a situation like this we say a common fraction and a fraction that has a numerator that is less than its denominator okay or we call it sometimes proper fraction okay we call it sometimes proper fraction okay we use the term normally proper fraction secondly we talk about fractions that are whole numbers okay how do we get fractions that are whole numbers we see some fractions when reduced are really whole numbers that is example we have one okay we have two three four and the likes okay these are all no all numbers as we discussed earlier. The all numbers occur if 
the denominator divides into the numerator evenly okay example if we have 8 upon 8 and of course 8 will cancel itself okay and the answer there is 1 so the other one is a whole number if we have another example 15 upon 5 okay when we divide 15 by 5 and of course we have 5 here is 1 and 5 into 15 is 3 times so therefore we have 3 and of course 3 is what a whole number 10 upon 1 okay 10 upon 1 we are in of course remember any number that stands alone like for example we have 5 okay we have 6 we have 4 these are all upon 1 these are all upon 1 okay never mind it is not visible okay you cannot see you cannot see our one there it is not represented there but it stands with it okay any number can be represented as a fraction okay so if you have 10 upon 1 and of course we have 10 mangoes we divide amongst a single person of course it's the same as 10 example let's prove that one we have 10 divided by 1 if I if we use our calculators we same have we still have the answer as what 10 okay thirdly we talk about mixed numbers or mixed fractions you say a mixed fraction is a combination of a whole number and a common fraction okay it's a combination of a whole number and a common fraction example we have two whole number one upon three comma that is an example we have seven whole number 13 upon five okay and of course again we have one whole number three upon two okay these are all mixed fractions okay it's a combination of a whole number okay two here is a whole number seven here is a whole number one there is a whole number okay the combination of a whole number and a common fraction common fraction like three upon two thirteen upon five one upon three okay and four on our agenda we have improper fractions improper fractions when we say a fraction is improper is one in which the numerator is larger or is bigger than the denominator okay example of course earlier we spoke about what proper fractions oh? okay which is the opposite of improper fraction okay we say again an improper fraction is one in which the numerator is larger than the denominator okay the numerator there let's say it's seven it's larger than the denominator which is three okay there is an improper fraction we have 10 upon 5 is an improper fraction we have 17 upon 3 or we have 150 upon 30 okay 150 upon 30 we say again these are all improper fractions okay say again a mixed number can be changed to a proper to an improper fraction i go over it again a mixed number can be changed to an improper fraction by changing the whole number to a fraction with the same denominator as a as the common fraction what is this greek trying to say here what are we trying to say let's digest this one we say when we have a mixed number that is to say a mixed fraction like say two whole number three upon two okay this is a mixed fraction we say this mixed number can be changed into or can be changed to a improper fraction by changing the whole number okay this whole number we can change this whole number okay to a fraction with the same denominator as the common fraction if even if we change it we do not lose the value of the denominator that is to say if i change 2 upon 3 to an improper fraction i will have what 2 times 2 plus our 3 okay all upon what 2 okay 2 by 2 is 4 plus 3 it is 7 upon 2 if i change this again that is what we are trying to say we have two whole number three upon four okay this can be changed to what we say four times two plus three okay four times this man 
plus our numerator there okay all upon what four okay so four by two which is eight plus three upon four and this will give us what eight plus three that is eleven upon what four okay eleven upon four okay I hope we all understand um <coughs> let's move ahead and before we move on remember this is learning garage and of course this is understanding fractions okay finally we say what simplifying fractions okay with all fractions which exist as we have said all type of fractions must always be simplified you must reduce it to its lowest term okay you must always reduce to its lowest term if you do not reduce then in, imagine an examination you're going to lose marks and of course you won't have the correct answer okay note that many fractions cannot be reduced since they have no common factors okay if to say you are given a fraction of course let me explain the first part we say all fractions must be reduced example we say 8 upon 4 okay it's the same as what there is a common factor here which is 2 2 can enter into 4 2 times and it can also enter into 8 how many times 4 times okay so we now have 4 upon 2 and also say we must reduce to its lowest term okay 2 is common here and 2 is common here okay so we we'll have 2 upon 1 which is the same as 2 okay if you are given a situation wherein the factors the fraction cannot be reduced since there is no common factor between the two numbers which is the numerator and the denominator example if you have 11 okay upon 17 okay there is no common factor between 11 and 17 so therefore you cannot kill yourself on that you leave it at as it is and also let's say we have 3 upon 5 okay there is no common factor that exists between 3 and 5 so therefore there is nothing that can reduce 3 and 5 at the same time okay so you leave it as you see it okay okay so here is a quick exercise for you i want you guys to please pay attention spare two minutes to go over these exercises and of course we shall take a break and when we come back we are going to discuss okay please go over them say which of the following are common factors you can just mark their c whole numbers w mixed numbers m or improper fractions i okay i guess you can answer all of this as we have explained so we're going for a short break when we come back we shall join you the inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English Language and Mathematics. 
Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that as a numerator, which is less than the denominator, we term it as a proper fraction. Welcome guys, of course, this is Learning Garage, we are talking fractions in mathematics. Okay, as we said, we go over again, we said we add a little exercise here, we say, which says, which of the following are common fact, which of the following are common fractions, okay? Whole numbers, mixed numbers, or improper fractions, okay? Now, let's, ad let's identify which is which. Okay, we start with the first one there, which is number one, which says two upon three. Okay, two upon three. Is two upon three a common fraction, whole number, mixed number, or improper fraction? Say two upon three is what? A common fraction. Okay, remember we said a proper fraction is a fraction wherein the numerator is less than our denominator. So therefore, 2 here, okay, 2 there is less than our 3, okay? So that makes it a common fraction. The second one says 3 whole number 4 upon 5. You are just to say whether this one is mixed, this one is common, this one is improper. Of course, we said again a mixed number or a mixed fraction is one in which we have a whole number mixed with a fraction okay we have the whole number there which is three and of course it is mixed with a fraction there which is four upon five so therefore this one is what a mixed number and we talk about the third one which is seven upon five the numerator there is seven and the denominator there is five and of course the denominator is less than our numerator the denominator there is less than our numerator so therefore it makes it an improper fraction okay i okay and the fourth one here says eight upon eight if we reduce eight upon eight and of course we have one one there is what a whole number okay one there is a whole number so therefore our four there is what is a whole number w okay the fifth one there says what 24 upon 2 okay of course there are common factors there for both numerator and denominator okay for both numerator there and denominator that is we have 24 upon 2 we are in 2 is common here and 2 into 24 is what 2 into 1 is 1 uh, 2 into 2 is 1 rather and 2 into 4 is 2 times so we have 12 and 12 is a whole number we say 5 whole number 8 upon 19 is what is a mixed number okay so this one is mixed okay and we have 2 whole number 3 upon 3 okay 2 whole number 3 upon 3 can we look at it closely can that one be reduced to a whole number if so then therefore remember you said we, we are told that always try to reduce our fra fractions okay we have two whole number two whole number three upon three okay three by two that is six plus three that is nine so we have nine upon three 
which is equivalent to what? To three. Okay, so three therefore therefore number seven is a whole number. Okay. Our seven there is a whole number. So this is W. Eight, we say twenty-five upon twenty-four. We have a denominator which is less than the numerator there. So it makes it what? An improper fraction, I. And of course, 9 says what? 24 upon 25. We are 24 as a numerator which is less than its denominator. And it makes it what? A proper fraction. A proper fraction there is what? A common fraction. Okay? So we represent it as C. And of course, last but not the least, we have 12 upon 12. 12 upon 12, this is equivalent to 1. So therefore, this is a whole number. Okay? I think we are going into fractions proper. Um, we look at the operating fractions. How do we operate fractions? Okay? How can we manipulate fractions when they are grouped? Okay? And the first one we said we are going to look at is addition of fractions how do fractions operate we operate fractions through what addition okay we can add a couple of fractions okay and then we sort them out we say adding fractions is done differently than the usual numbers okay the usual way fractions appear normally while adding or subtracting fractions you will find two types of problems okay the first one there is what we are the fractions being added have the same denominator okay if you experience the same denominator there then this is one way example okay these are two sets of fractions okay we have 3 upon 11 and we have 5 upon 11 okay we say 3 so you say 3 upon 11 okay plus 5 upon 11 they all be the same denominator so therefore what do we do when you have the same denominators we find lcm okay we find the least common multiple okay the least common multiple between two addition or subtraction of fractions okay is the least factor or is the least number that both denominators can enter into without any remainder and the least common factor there is what 11 11 is the least common multiple there so 11 into itself is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, plus, okay, 11 into 11 is 1 times, 1 times 5 is 5, okay? When we divide the value, we multiply to the numerator, okay? We used to say we have 3 plus 5 upon 11, that gives us what? 8 upon 11, okay? 8 upon 11. Can we further reduce this one? Okay, are there any common factors that exists between 8 and 11 no if the answer is no then we leave it like that okay type 2 we say we are the fraction being added have different denominators okay you have different de denominators for example 1 upon 3 and also 2 upon 5 okay if i have 1 upon 3 plus 2 sorry plus 2 upon 5 okay Can we solve this one? Yes, we can solve using either the LCM method or I call it as Dino equalizer. Okay, let's talk about the first one using the LCM method. Just like we said, we find two um, factors which are the least multiples. Okay, what are the multiples of three? Example, multiples of three are what? Three are three, five, three, sorry, six, nine. 12 15 okay 18 and so on okay 18 21 and so on what are what about the factors of 5 okay multiples of 5 you have 5 you have 10 15 20 okay and the and the likes so therefore we are talking about the list number that 5 and 3 can enter into without any remainder that is 15 okay 15 there is the least factor okay so therefore our lcm there is what 15 if we say 3 into 15 is how many times 5 times 
5 times 1 gives us what? 5, okay, plus, and then 5 upon 15 there is what? 3. 3 times 2 gives us what? 6. So, this is the same as what? 6 plus 5 gives us what? 11 upon 15, okay? Can we further simplify 11 upon 15? Are there any common factors between 11 and 15? No. If not, then we leave it as it is, okay? And our second method, we talk about the Dino equalizer, okay? I just named it like that, of course. Uh, when we talk about Dino equalizer, we are talking about ha having to make both denominators on either side equal. That is to say, that is to say, if I have 1 upon 3 plus 2 upon 5, okay, I look at the denominators, which is 3 and 5, then I multiply, example, this first set, I multiply this guy by, I multiply here by 5, and then also I multiply this other guy by what, 3, okay, that is to say, what I, I mean is that I multiply 1, 1 by what, you say 5, 1 upon 5, 1 times 5 upon what, 3, multiplied by 5, plus, again, 2, multiplied by 3, all upon 5, multiplied by 3, okay, so let's see what this gives us, 1 by 5 is 5, okay, all upon, 3 by 5 is 15, plus, 3 and 2, there is 6, all upon what, 5 by 3 is 15, okay, so therefore both denominators are equal and therefore as we have equalized them therefore we can just add our numerators that is to say 5 sorry that is to say 5 there plus 6 all upon 15 which gives us what 11 upon 15 which is the same way as we solved earlier okay we are going to arrive at the same answer using either methods okay so I'll prefer the LCM method, which is much shorter, okay? How do we operate fractions using multiplication and division? We say multiplication and division of fractions are relatively easier tax than adding and subtracting, okay? As one may say, that is for me, okay? Multiplication of fractions is often applied in many everyday calculations in many situations amongst to simple cancelling out of numbers, okay? That is to say, of course, when we multiply or when we divide, we have to consider the following steps, okay? We have to write firstly, step number one, please note, step number one, okay? Write all factors, write all fraction terms as numerators and denominators, okay? You must not get mixed fractions, okay? Make sure you write them as what? Numerators and denominators denominators okay write them as like that step two again under multiplication you make sure you cancel out okay common terms okay cancel terms that can be simplified okay you must cancel terms that can be simplified okay and then of course multiply multiply numerators with denominators okay if example you have 1 upon 2 multiplied by 3 upon 7, okay? You can multiply, you can cross multiply, okay? You can multiply 2 and 3 and then you can multiply 1 and 7, okay? Multiplying, step 4 again, we say multiply denominators with numerators, okay? You can either multiply this man to this man, the numerator to denominator here or this one in opposite directions, okay? And then finally, you write the fraction or the term as the answer, okay? We shall give an example, okay? You're asked to simplify 4 upon 9 multiplied by 3 upon 5, okay? Can we solve this one? Yes, we can solve this one. We have 4 upon 9 multiplied by 3 upon 5. Remember, the rule says what? You have to simplify, you have to cancel out, okay? 
numbers that are both numerators to denominators okay you never cancel numerator to denominator okay you never cancel this man to this man okay you only cancel numerator to denominator in on either side okay on either side we say 4 upon 9 multiplied by 3 upon 5 okay is 4 we get we have 4 as a numerator here and we have 3 as a numerator here are there any factors that are common for both 4 for 4 and any other denominator on either side no uh, do we have a common factor between 3 9 or 3 and 5 yes Three can enter enter into itself once and can enter into nine two times. Okay, that is to say three times three gives us what nine. Okay, three times three gives us nine. Okay, so three can enter into nine two times. Okay, and of course four cannot enter into two, but two can enter into four. Okay, so therefore we have two here is one. 2 into 4 is 2 times okay so we definitely have 2 multiplied by 1 upon what 1 multiplied by 5 this gives us finally 2 upon 5 okay as an answer similarly so for question 2 okay you're asked to solve 5 multiplied by 3 upon 7 multiplied by 1 upon 5 okay let's take for example remember we can either choose the first two or the last two okay as long as the signs there the relationship between them is multiplication we can be selective okay but we start with the first two terms okay that is to say five multiplied by three upon seven remember any number that stands alone is upon one okay so therefore do we have any common factors that can cancel this man out okay this is multiplied by 1 upon 5 okay and of course we can simplify this by saying of course there is a common factor here which is 5 there is a common factor here which is 5 so we have 1 times 3 times 1 times 3 times 1 all upon 1 times 7 times 1 this gives us what 1 times 3 is 3 times 1 is 3 upon 1 times 7 is 7 times 1 which is 7 can we further simplify 3 upon 7 no so therefore the answer remains as 3 upon 7 okay ladies and gentlemen so i think you should try out some of these ones okay okay so finally before we take our leave let's look at some past questions remember we are addressing the syllabus from work okay and of course fractions numbers of course these are all part of the family in mathematics okay we have some past questions here which says okay you have to simplify this was this came up and um, was august 1991 okay august 1991 1991 was says um simplify one upon four to the power minus one one whole number one upon two again i read again we ask to simplify one upon four raised to the power minus one minus one whole number one upon two can we solve this one yes we can okay let's take our time and solve this one okay it's a solution okay so if we break this down into bits we start up with the mixed fraction there we have one upon four all raised to the power minus what 2 times 1 gives us 2 plus 1 is 3 upon 2 okay 3 upon 2 okay so can we simplify this one yes we can okay but remember when you have a reciprocal of any number that is to say if we have example 1 upon a is equivalent to what a raised to the power minus one okay so therefore if we have one upon four here this is equivalent to what four raised to the power minus one okay so i erase this one and now we solve our problem so we represent this man as what four 
all four all number of course is a whole number it is four raised to the power minus one okay all multiplied by what minus three upon two okay if i remove my bracket there i will have four raised to the power minus one multiplied by minus three upon two okay if i simplify this one of course i'll get what four and of course minus and minus cancels okay so minus times minus which is plus okay minus times minus is plus of course and then plus we never put it in front of that so we leave it like this okay which is plus then one times three is three upon two okay so this is the same as my four i can reduce this to what two whole number of course i'm used to the fractions now two whole number is is the same as what two raised to the power two that is to say uh, two times two gives us what four okay okay so this is all raised to the power three upon two again we'll have two raised to the power two multiplied by what three upon two okay and of course we have common factors two here is common two here is common okay so here is one two goes here one so we have two whole number of sorry we have two raised to the power three two raised to the power three is the same as what two times two times two which gives us what eight okay so therefore our final answer there is eight all the fraction is been what reduce the value which is eight okay so i hope we understand clearly and we'll solve one more and then i leave the rest with you okay let's solve question number two okay or can we select something else which is recent yes i think i'll go in for question five which is of a different nature okay question five says you have to evaluate three whole number one upon four so I think we have something huge that we, we can solve here. Of course, solution. Of course, let's call this the numerator via A. Okay. And there we the new denominator we say B. Okay. We are going to solve for A and B separately, and when we come, we are going to combine them and solve as a unit. Okay. We say there A is equal to what? Three whole number one upon four multiply by one whole number three upon five okay so if we reduce this one out we'll have we have three times four which is 12 12 plus one which is 13 upon four multiplied by five times one is five plus three there is eight upon five okay so can we simplify this one yes 4 is common here, 1s and 4 can enter into 8 2 times. So therefore, we'll have 13 multiplied by 2, multi all upon 1 by 5. Okay? 13 by 2 gives us what? 26 all upon 5. Okay? So therefore, our A there is 26 upon 5. Now we solve for B. Our B there says what? 11 all number 1 upon 3 11 all number 1 upon 3 minus 5 all number 1 upon 3 5 all number 1 upon 3 okay so if by solving this one please let me just separate them by solving this one we have what 11 by 3 gives us what 33 plus 1 which is 34 upon 3 minus what 5 by 3 or 3 times 5, 15 plus 1, which is 16 upon 3, okay? So, therefore, we have LCMs which are common. So, therefore, the LCM there is 3, and 3 can enter into 3. is 1 times 1 times 34 gives us what? 34 minus 3 into 3 is 1 times 1 times 16 gives us 16. So, therefore, this gives us what? 34 minus 16 is, of course, we can use our calculator we say 34 minus but let me 34 minus 16 gives us what 18 okay so therefore we have 18 
we have 18 upon 3 okay so 18 upon 3 is the same as what can 3 enter into 18 yes 3 and 3 into itself is 1 18 divided by 3 gives us 6 okay so therefore b is equal to 6 so therefore it makes it easier hence we say our a upon b is equal to what 26 upon 5 26 upon 5 divided by 6 okay so 26 upon 5 is what so this gives us what 26 we change the division sign to multiplication that is to say when we multiply then we invert we are going to invert 5 upon 26 multiply by what 6 okay if you invert this one you leave this one constant or invert um, the 6 or you change and you leave the 5 upon you leave the 26 upon uh, 5 constant having inverted this gives us what can we simplify this upon 1 okay can 6 enter can we have common values okay for clarity you say 26 divided by 6 of course you cannot so we find common which is 3 can 3 enter into 26 we cannot so we take 2 so 26 divided by 2 gives us what 13 26 divided by 2 okay so therefore we have 2 here is 3 times and 2 here 2 into itself is 1 into 6 is 3 so therefore we'll have 5 times 3 which is 15 upon 13 okay this gives us a final answer which is equivalent also to 13 into 15 how many times is 1 times remainder 2 upon 13 okay so this gives us a final answer for today and of course i'll leave you with these few problems to solve thank you very much for listening to me and thank you for participating and of course please make sure you practice these ones let me reduce the scale for you yes you ask to simplify so you can simplify these questions you try them at home you can call your colleagues you solve them together whether in study camp or study group or in schools please make sure you practice remember the success to mathematics or the success to education is about perseverance is about practice you cannot understand mathematics without you going through your work you practicing so therefore i'll leave you with this and of course i want to say a big thank you to all of you that have spared your time to look at all the problems that we have been trying to say we are trying to solve i've been your host daira dabatun de lamin this is learning garage thank you The inception of the West African Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination, university requirement has largely called for five subjects. Mandatory among these are English language and mathematics. Every year, thousands of students run into the course of either having to resit for not getting credits on English and mathematics or painfully changing career path or into same. To help modify this narrative, Star Television presents on your screen Learning Garage, a platform that guarantees better performance in English language and mathematics with a team of experienced teachers. To this solution, you all are invited, especially those facing WASC. 
Learning Garage comes to you on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Repeat broadcast are screened on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Join host Ali Santa Kamara. If you mean such element, then of course we we'll say the waters of the world in that regard. And Babatunde Gaira Lamin on these days to make a world of difference. Action that as a numerator which is less than the denominator we term it as a proper fraction. Mm-hmm.